Good evening, everybody. This is my second stream of the day. I am uh, working on the same jumper that I've been working on for a while now, which is Lanatus. Um, so if you haven't seen it before, uh, Lanatus is a jumper from a designer called Susan Crawford. It's a new pattern. Uh, it's a pattern from her new book, Evolution, um, which I, I ordered uh, and is being sent to me and is intended as a gift uh, for a friend of mine. So I'm going to be sending that on. Um, but this is a four ply, so a fairly thin knitting yarn, fingering weight um, jumper. And it's got a Fair Isle yoke. So I've, I've said Fair Isle a few times on these streams. I should probably clarify. So Fair Isle refers to this style here, where you have um, two colors in one row. Uh, and it's that sort of traditional, um, you know, you can think of like a golf jumper or something like that. Um, this one is a yoked jumper because the design is just around, I'm knitting it from the top down. And so um, it's just around the yoke area, which is the neck and the shoulders. You can, as a variation on this pattern, uh, do the patterning throughout the whole jumper, but I thought it would be faster to leave the bottom and sleeves plain, which it is, it's just also super boring. So if you joined me this morning, I talked a fair bit about interchangeable knitting needles because the ones I'm using happen to be interchangeables, meaning I can actually pop the tips off and swap out different sizes. Um, and so when you buy them, you buy a kit or a set that's got all different kinds of needles. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm not going to reiterate all of that. You can watch this morning's stream if you want to, but um, interchangeable knitting needle set is a great gift for the knitter in your life. So what did I do today other than uh, knit this morning? I, um, oh, I, uh, I pulled a whip out of the, the work, in pro, work in progress, WIPs, knitters love their acronyms. So I pulled out a whip uh, that I started, gosh, two years ago, which is like 95% done. Um, it is a cardigan that I started knitting for my cousin had a baby. Um, oh God, it would be longer than two, longer than two years because that child is now three or four years old. So, uh, I, so I didn't finish it before he was born and got too big. And then she had another one and I thought I'll give it to the other one and didn't quite make it in time for him either. Um, and now another cousin has had a baby and he's one. So if I actually finish this damn thing soon, I can actually send it to them. So uh, it's a very cute pattern. I can show you the pattern here. Um, so the pattern is called the digger jacket. So as you can see, it's a hoodie um, and it's got a, a, a oh, I, hi, Karen. Nice to see you, Karen. Uh, thanks. Karen's enjoying the, the jumper that I'm knitting. But the digger jacket um, is a different style. You see, in, it's picture knitting instead of being Fair Isle. If Fair Isle's got, you know, two colors in a row and it's sort of geometric patterns, Intarsia is picture knitting. So that's where you're knitting, um, you know, it was big in the 80s when you had jumpers with like characters on them and stuff. And so this is an Intarsia jacket knitted in eight ply. And so I've knitted it, I've completely knitted it, and I needed to block it. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about blocking. So I'll show you a picture of what it looks like right now. It's just sitting um, over on the, the, the guest bed here in my office. So here's my version of the jumper. And um, so what I did to actually block this is I washed it today. So I gave it a good wash um, in the, on the wool cycle. I mean, like you can hand wash it. I deliberately used machine washable wool because it is for a child. So I gave it a wash in the washing machine on the wool cycle. Um, and then while it was still damp, um, back home in Australia, I would do this on some of those foam rubber camping mats, you know, that you, you interlock together. Um, but here I don't have that. So I used, as I said, the, the guest room. We have a little get pull out guest bed. And so I've pulled that out and I've, um, oh, I have my first spam comment. Yay. How nice. No, I don't want to. Anyway, ignore that person. Um, yeah, so while it was damp, I spread it out on a towel 
um, to keep the, 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 the guest bed from getting too wet. And then I used uh, pins. And you can see I've used these sort of T-wire pins. Um, but you can use any pins, as long as they're not pins that are going to rust, just because, you know, the wool is a little bit damp. Um, how do I, like, block this person? Can I block them? Yeah, I can ban them. Nice. Oh, I banned someone. Fun. Hi, Jody. Hi, Cassidy. Great to see you. My Australian friends are all getting up and starting the day. Yeah, so blocking means pinning out the damp jumper um, into the right shape you want because actually uh, it, it matters quite a great deal. You know, when you knit something, it, if you look here, at, look what I'm, you know, look at the project I'm working on. Like, I have fairly even tension, but so this is, it's, you know, it's a bit sort of, the stitches aren't super um, flat and even and perfect, but once I get this wet, and pull it into shape and let it dry that way. It's gonna make all the stitches more even. It's gonna just look a hundred times better. And so um, that's what blocking does for you. And so with this um, digger jumper, what I'm trying to do, uh, obviously, is I need to sew the zipper in along that front band where the green is. And so by blocking it, um, I'm making that band nice and sort of straight. It's almost like if it's wool, you can actually iron wool. You can press steam wool. Um, you don't want to do that with acrylic. It will destroy acrylic. But if it's wool, you can actually do it. And that can actually help to set the stitches and make them look nice as well. So this is just going to sit there um, until it dries. And then I'll take all the pins out. I will sew in the zipper. And then I will send it off to my cousin for her little boy. Um, and hopefully he will like it. So yeah, um, working on Lanatus, uh, Karen. Nice. Um, I'm glad you like it. It's um, it was really fun color work to do. I'm a big fan. I was actually looking at more color work patterns today. I've really kind of got the bug now on um, the Fair Isle yoked yoked jumpers. Uh, Susan Crawford. Now that I'm on her email list, the designer of this pattern, she sent out. Um, a link in her newsletter today to a really beautiful one by a designer on Ravelry called Skeindeer. And I looked up Skeindeer, S-K-E-I-N-D-E-R on Ravelry, and Skeindeer has some beautiful patterns. Um, very traditional sort of Norwegian, Scandinavian style. Um, and so I'm kind of looking at it. But Skeindeer's patterns mostly look to be steaked. And while I have done steaking in the past, Oh, I should mention what steaking is for those of you who haven't done it. So you can see with this jumper, I'm knitting this jumper in the round, you know, I'm knitting it as a series of tubes like the internet, as we discussed, and it will be seamless. I don't have to sew anything together. Um, you know, the, the sleeves are currently sitting here on some scrap wool. Uh, you can see that white thread that I've threaded through there. So I'll be able to slip those onto knitting needles later and knit the arm tube down to the hands. I can try it on as I go. There's a lot of advantages to circular knitting. Um, but it doesn't work for making a cardigan, does it? You can't make a cardigan as a tube. So you can either make it in pieces and sew it together, which nobody got time for that. Um, plus, if you make it in pieces and not in the round, that means you have to swap between knitting and purling, which as we saw this morning, purling is not difficult, um, but I am slower at it than I am knitting. So it's actually faster to just knit for me. Um, but what you can do, and what the clever, clever Norwegians worked at a long time ago, is you can cut your knitting. You can actually cut it, and they call that steaking. So imagine if I decided that this was actually gonna be a cardigan instead of a sweater. So imagine, if you will, here on the front, let me find the front of it. Uh, that's the back, there's the front. So imagine instead on the front, if I were just to slice it, slice it right down the front there, obviously it would unravel. Um, and so what you, there are various techniques you do to actually keep it from unraveling. Unra unraveling, all right. I swear I've only had half a beer. Um, hey, Margaret. Nice to see you, Margaret. So that's steaking. And so there's usually what you do is you have, you'd have a plain bit down the middle 
um, that you're designating as your steak. So maybe it would be like five or six stitches down the middle. And what I would probably do is checkerboard um, the, the teal and the white yarns in that section of the steak, which helps lock them together. And then when I finished the jumper, before I cut, what I would do is I would actually, um, you could, there's a few different techniques you can do. One uses a crochet hook and you basically sort of crochet a line uh, up on either edge of the steak and that helps keep it from unraveling. Uh, or the way that I did it when I did it in the past was to machine sew the sucker. You use a sewing machine and sew lines down the side. And then you cut it up, you take a deep breath and you cut it up the middle. And it's very scary the first time you do it. You think I've just put invested all these hours of knitting and the damn thing's gonna fall apart on me. Uh, but no, the Norwegians are brilliant. And the other thing, the other key to steaking is you need to use a wool that is kind of sticky, you know, hairy. So it grabs together, um, which Merino like this, it, it does, you know, it wants to stick together. So that helps it not unravel as well. And then you pick up stitches along that raw edge and knit on your button bands for your cardigan. Um, so there's a couple cardigans that Skein Deer has that are gorgeous, but they're steaked. And like I said, I've done steaking. It shouldn't be scary. Um, and it, it actually is faster because it basically means you knit the thing as a tube. You can also do steaks at the shoulders for the armholes and a little steak to open up the neck as well. So you basically knit this sort of big ass tube and then put cuts in it for your arms and for the front. So it's faster for doing this all over color work. It's just a little scary to, to, to cut a steak. And so I'm trying to decide if my love of skein deers all over Norwegian patterns is enough to talk me into uh, going back to steak land. Steak land is a scary place. So the digger jumper is blocking. What else? Yeah, I've got a few whips um, works in progress in the bag and I should probably clear them out before I start anything new, to be completely honest with you. Um, you don't wanna have too many things on the go. Um, yeah, I've got another all over, actually, huh, I have in there in the naughty corner, an all over feral cardigan with a steak, exactly as I was just describing. Um, it's all in rowan yarns and it's a rowan pattern, which any knitters are like, uh, that tells you that it's super expensive because they're quite pricey British yarns, um, but gorgeous patterns and have invested quite a lot of money and effort in knitting the body of this cardigan. And I think it's gonna be too small. Well, actually, it's been sitting in that bag for like three years. So if I thought it was small then, it's sure as heck going to be small now. Um, so it's kind of just sitting there and while I stew over it, I don't think I have enough wool to pull it apart and knit a bigger size. I don't think I'd have enough because it was expensive and I only bought just what I needed and I probably couldn't get the right color dye lots anyway. So I'm thinking, I still like the pattern. I'm wondering if I could adapt it to be a vest instead. So maybe I'll pull it apart and use the same pattern, but leave the sleeves off and make it into a vest because then I would have enough wool. So that's an option. That's one whip. Um, another whip that I was showing off this morning, I'll, I'll pull out quickly here so you can see. Uh, this is not one that I have any urgency on completing, but this is just kind of a cool one that I do whenever um, I need a more portable project. This is, uh, uh, it's called a memory scarf um, from a Melbourne, not really much of a pattern to it, a Melbourne artist called Teresa Dare. Um, and I'm actually just knitting it, um, you know, stocking stitch, and every now and then I'm throwing in some garter stitch rows. I think I did, here I did a row where I did eyelets, like a row of lace to add some holes in it, not really making up a pattern. But the reason it's called a memory scarf is what I'm knitting it with. You can see here on this cone, there's actually, I separate it. There's two strands here. They're sticking together. There you go, you can see them. Two strands. And so 
um, the, the white strand is like a, it's like a cotton nylon thread, something like that. Um, but the, the gray one, the gray one is actually wire. It is actually very, very, very fine gauge wire wrapped in silk from Japan. And so you hold the two of them together and you knit with them and it, it still feels like a sort of kind of slightly crispy silk, I guess. Um, but the reason it's called a memory scarf is because it, it's sort of, because of the wire, it holds a shape. You know, if you give it a tug, it will actually stay that way, um, which I just found interesting. And, you know, it's knitting with wire. Like, how hardcore is that, right? So I'm just, I'm just playing with it. It's, I've honestly had it on the go for like a few years now. Um, but it's, so it'll be a fashion item. It's not really anything that's going to keep me warm. As you can tell, I'm knitting it on fairly big needles, which is why it's very open, almost like a chain mail as well. Um, so yeah, so this is a, a, a scarf I'm knitting and I'm using, interesting, I'm using circular needles to knit it, but I'm not knitting a tube like I am with the sweater. I'm actually knitting back and forth. So this is to show you, you can use circular needles, um, to knit back and forth. You just change direction at the end of the row. Maybe I'll do a row on this while I have it out just to show you. And the trick is to just treat it as if it's one yarn rather than two threads being held together. So just push them along the needle. Obviously it doesn't really, I mean the, the, the white thread stretches, but the, the wire doesn't. Um, so it's a very interesting, like it's not the nicest thing in the world to knit with, which is why I, you know, I do a few rows on it every couple of months but it's more of a conversation starter because I'm basically knitting chain mail. And how badass is that? I'm also, because it's two threads and because I don't want to split them, I'm also a lot slower with it. I don't wanna, like when I put the needle through, I don't wanna miss one of them. I wanna be sure and catch both of them. And the plan is to just, just make up the pattern and knit until I run out of it. But, so that's one of the whips. This is the one I take, like if I'm working on a project that is a bit too complicated and I'm going, well, except nobody does this year, but back when I used to go out to actual in-person knitting groups, you're going out to a stitch and bitch or to a, a, the Knitters Guild meeting, you know, you can't always have the mind space to work on a very complicated pattern. And so something like this you can chuck in your bag on the train, you know, wherever you can always uh, knit with it. And plus, if somebody asks you about it, you get to be a badass and tell them how you're knitting with wire. This is the one problem with this stuff, though. The wire actually tangles up. Um, and it looks like I've got quite a knot. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah. I feel like it's because the thread stretches more than the wire does. Um, and so sometimes, sometimes that causes some problems, but it looks like it's sorting itself out here. So as I said, this is, uh, I got the, I got the actual wire. Um, I believe it's Japanese, but I got it from an Australian woman who imports it called Teresa Dare, as I mentioned, and, um, D-A-I-R. Uh, she was Melbourne based last I spoke to her. I actually arranged for her to come teach some workshops at the Knitters Guild of New South Wales meeting a few years, uh, camp. We had a camp a few years back and she came and presented and she does really, you know, she, she's not your grandma's knitting, you know, it's, it's all very art, very sculptural, um, you know, very modern. She, she imports and knits with some very interesting materials. So in addition to the wire, like I've got here, you know, she, uh, she had glow in the dark yarn. She had various tapes, reflective tapes that you could knit with, um, so it's very cool. You should look her up. She had a shop. I believe she closed out her shop and sold off everything. I'm not sure if she's still doing the yarns, but very cool designer. And uh, that's where I got the wire from. Last stitch. Cool. And then I just... I finish the row and I just kind of give it a tug to make the stitches sit nice. 
So there, we did a row on the memory scarf. So that's a long-term whip in progress. So the whip, uh, it's funny because knitting with wire, I was talking about this this morning, whenever I tell people I'm knitting with wire, um, because I've done talks about e-textiles, they think that I'm going to run a current through it. And, you know, uh, if, and if any of you did, you know, high school physics, you know that, that that's not going to work. That The wire crosses over each other several times here. If I tried to run a current through this, it would just short out instantly. So no, this is not something that I'm going to electrify. <laughs> this is just, it's literally just for its um, sculptural sculptural qualities. Uh, if you want to, you can get conductive thread. You can actually buy conductive thread by the spool and you use that to sew. And so if I wanted to, for example, let's say I'm not going to, but let's say I wanted to add some LEDs uh, to the jumper I'm knitting to, to Lanatus here, um, I could actually uh, sew a trace in. So a, a basically sew a circuit with conductive thread. But you have to be very, very careful when you do that to not let it touch, not cross it with any others, um, not let it double back on itself. Um, I have done a few things with, with you know, blinking lights, and usually it involves getting some clear nail polish and putting on the back wherever you think it could touch the other conductive thread because it will short out and you don't want that. So no, I'm not gonna be electrifying the, uh, the memory scarf. Do I have any other whips? Did I bring any other whips with me? I think those are the two main ones. Um, so I should deal with them before I'm allowed to cast on anything new. And I guess frogging the one that's the wrong size, that counts as dealing with. I should just frog it. I should talk about the jumper I'm wearing. Um, so the jumper I'm wearing, I did knit. Uh, it's called St. Bridget by Alice Starmore. And I don't know how well you can see. It's, um, it's very heavily cabled, actually. I'll, do, I'll pull it. So it's got these sort of Celtic style cables on it. And I can show you the actual pattern page. Um, so that's, uh, that's the, the pattern for the St. Bridget. Um, and it's, a, it's by a designer called Alice Starmore who does these very traditional style Aran garments, Aran, you know, the Isle of Aran, so cables. Um, and I fell in love with this one. I didn't, knit, you see on that second photo, it's got fringe. I didn't put the fringe on mine. Um, but I knitted this several years ago, and I did it out of a very tweedy. It's a much thicker yarn than what I'm knitting with right now. So this is a, a 10-ply yarn, Aran weight, we call it, which is much thicker. It knits up much faster, and as you can see, it's got that fleck in it. That's what I mean by tweedy. It's also a bit sort of rougher. It's not a smooth yarn, but it's also quite soft. Um, this has some silk in it, actually, and so it's, it's a Joe Sharp Silk Road Aran tweed, and it's very nice to wear. Um, I don't know. It, 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 it's great to wear. It, you know, it doesn't show off the patterns as well as like, you know, that, that plain, those plain wools do. You can really see how the cables pop on that green one, but whatever. I like it. It's very warm though. And under these lights, I'm like, very warm. Bye Jody. Have fun. Set, send Cass off to school. Say hi from me. All right. So I am, by the way, I am archiving each of these episodes to YouTube. So I have a YouTube channel. Um, if you missed any earlier ones, uh, I think they stay on Twitch for two weeks, but then they disappear. So I am copying them over to YouTube before then, so I'll have a complete history of them on there. If for some reason you'd like to go back. Um, oh, guten Abend, Dennis. That's my colleague, Dennis. Uh, yes, ich stricke, Dennis. That's German for I'm knitting. Um, I'm working on my German. I did buy this wool in Germany. I bought it at a local knitting shop here in Munich um, called Artelia. 
uh, it's a little cave of wonders down in the city center, um, full of really beautiful yarns. And uh, been to a couple here in Munich. Unfortunately, right now, you, I would have loved to have gone and joined some knitting groups, and but none of them are doing groups or classes because of you know, we're sort of under lockdown. We're kind of even going under even stricter lockdown, pretty much um, day by day. So I haven't been able to go, unfortunately, to any local knitting groups. But I did get to do on Friday. I did um, I did knit by a video conference with some of my Australian friends. Uh, which was lovely, and um, I really needed that. So thanks thanks to you ladies who knitted with me on Friday. That was very nice. Hopefully some of you are knitting with me. Anyone is knitting with me now. I don't think Dennis is knitting, but maybe I'll... Mark my words, Dennis, you will learn. Okay, so my plan originally, you'll recall, was to try and get this finished before reInvent finishes. Uh, reInvent is the three week long, well normally it's one week long, but this year, three week long uh, technology conference that the company I work for, Amazon Web Services, puts on. Normally I'd be in Vegas, um, but instead I'm under lockdown in Germany, watching all the sessions over video conference for three weeks. And this is the last week coming up, and I I mean, the one advantage of it being online is I get to knit <laughs> through through the sessions where I'm not presenting, and so um, and so I've been knitting uh, a fair bit, but it's uh, there's no way I'm going to be done. I actually I put it on the other day to check um, yesterday. So one of the advantages of the interchangeable needles I mentioned is you can actually pop the tips off and connect a few cables up. Um, and make it really long so you can actually try it on, get it over your, your, your torso, which I couldn't on the other needle I was using. And so I tried it on yesterday and I'll show you. So that's where it was yesterday. So I'm about halfway through the body, um, but it's a very fine wool. Frankly, this going around and around in stocking stitch is kind of boring. <laughs> so I think the chances of me getting it done uh, and I've, I've actually got a few sessions I'm presenting this week as well. Um, I'm helping out all day Tuesday with our um, with the game day we're doing. If anyone's in Europe and wants to learn about AWS hands-on in this really sort of fun contest, you can sign up for our game day. I'm helping out with that. Um, I'm, I think on Friday I'm going to be on Dennis. Oh, no! Oh, no, I just pulled. Okay, there's a go. So I this is I dig the exact thing I said this morning could happen the tip popped off, which means my stitches are loose. So I'm not going to panic. I'll show you what just happened. It broke, and I've got three stitches there that fell off. So I've quickly grabbed another needle, and I'm going to pull the cable so I don't lose any more. But this is exactly what this morning I was saying you have to be careful about with these interchangeables, is if you accidentally break the tip because mine just go on with a sort of springy click, which means you can accidentally pop them off. All right, so I've, I've grabbed them. I haven't grabbed them well, but I've grabbed them. So I'm gonna put them on this spare needle. I'm gonna reconnect my cable up. Naughty cable. How exciting was that, folks? And look, I've dropped them off the other end, too. This is just a nightmare. Make sure it's on securely this time. Okay. Okay. And now let's go and pick up the ones that slid off the front. Yay! I'm getting to correct so many errors for you. So now I'm just going to try and quickly grab all of these. And I'm not going to grab them perfectly. I'm just going to try and capture the loops because I can fix each one as I come to it. So. Oh, you didn't think you were going to save that, see me have a crisis tonight, did you? It's because I jinxed it, because I was talking this morning about how that can happen. <laughs> and then I caused it to happen. All right, okay, now we're just going to fix all these, mang yeah, kaput, Dennis, exactly. So now we're just going to fix all these mangled stitches. So one by one as I come to them. First thing I want you to notice, and I'll, I'll put that back the way it was, is when you're learning to knit... You need to understand, you need to get a feel for the way that stitches sit on the knitting needle. And you learn to recognize when one isn't sitting the right way. And for those of you who don't knit, you, you probably won't know, but I can tell this stitch is twisted. It's, it's, it's not sitting on the needle the right way. That's the way it should be sitting. So with, 
you know, imagine a little man straddling the needle and he's facing the end. His right leg should be towards me. Um, and so I just need, you can see I've got two ladders there. So it dropped down two stitches. So I just need to re-knit those two stitches. One and two. And then I can actually knit that one. And that one has been rescued. Next one, also twisted. So I will fix that. And how many threads? Only It's only dropped down one. So I will re-knit that one stitch. And now knit it. So this is, uh, Dennis says, this is why I don't knit. That's what happened to me all the time. And I would probably start poking my eyes out with the needles out of frustration. Well, the thing is, it's just sticks and string. Most errors are you know, you are recoverable. The problem is when you're starting out, you don't know how to, you need to make errors in order to figure out how to fix them. And I just know that a lot of people, when they're starting out, something, something goes wrong and they, they either chuck it in the naughty corner for a year or they unravel the whole thing because they don't know how to fix it. Um, if you do have a local knitting shop, you can very, like I said, Catch the stitches any way you possibly can so it doesn't unravel any further. Even, you know, put them on a safety pin even um, and take them to your local knitting shop and they will help you undo it. The only thing, most things you can fix, even something cabled like this, if a stitch drops, you can usually fix it. Um, lace is one of the only ones where it's actually quite hard uh, to, to fix it, to get the stitches back on the needle. It's because you've got, you know, holes and yarn overs and all kinds. This is why I don't knit a lot of lace, to be honest with you. Um, but what you often do with lace is you, you run a safety line, meaning um, you, uh, you actually run a thread, like a sewing thread or another thin wool, through all the stitches on the needles every, say, 20 or 10 or 20 or 50 rows. And then if you do stuff up, you rip it out, you rip it back to that point, and all those stitches are saved. It's almost like a save point in a video game. You know, you can put down a save point for your lace knitting by running a safety line, um, and that can be very handy. So if you knit lace, look into safety lines. You're going to need those. That will save your bacon. But look, this is easy. I'm just, each of these stitches, these ones are okay. So that was, those were the ones that slid off the needle. Seem to be all, all fixed up. So let's knit along and get to those ones that fell off the back of the needle. All right, stitches jumping off both ends of the needle. Looks like it's all right. Yep, I didn't drop anything there. They're all picked up. Nothing. Okay. So, knit along. I have no idea what this person is saying. This is because, you know what this is? This is because I'm streaming in a time zone that the US is awake, which means I'm getting weird people. Let's get to these other busted stitches so I can fix those as well. Oh, you're just being a memer. Okay, I don't know, I don't know, thanks. Thanks for explaining. I don't, I don't know that meme, but welcome. Yeah, I don't know that meme. One might think that it's not a good idea to knit and drink beer at the same time. But I'm in Munich and we rode to the local craft beer store tonight and picked up some, there, there is German craft beer, and we picked up some cans uh, for which we paid way too much. Way, way too much. You know, normal German beer, which you buy in a can in the grocery store, which is pretty damn good beer, is like one euro, okay? It's like a dollar fifty Australian. And um, it's very cheap, and you get a deposit back, uh, but... What, Dennis, you said, why is that? What do you mean, why is that, Dennis? Why is, why is what? Or about knitting or about beer? But the, the craft beer cans here cost more like six euros. <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, I'm supporting a local, you know, art, artisanal industry. 
So I tell myself. So I think I'm drinking um, a hazy, hazy IPA of some kind. It's a bit hoppy. It's not my favorite. We got some sours. That's what I was interested. But you know, as from my understanding, the the Reinheitsgebot, the 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 law in Germany, um, kind of really restricts. Um, why is drinking beer while knitting a bad idea? You just saw what happened. All right, I I, I broke the cable and all the stitches fell off. It can end badly. That said, pub knitting, I have done a fair bit of pub knitting in my life. You often want to have a simple project. You don't want to bring something super complicated. All right, we're almost up to that part where the stitches fell off. Just a few more to get to there. But yeah, the Reinheitsgebot, as far as I know, as far as I know um, rather restricts what ingredients you can put in something in Germany and sell it as beer. Um, but there, there is craft beer here. So I was happy to see that and some very interesting looking craft beer by the looks of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that back needle through just so that there's no chance any more stitches will fall off. And now I'm gonna fix these ones on the spare needle that I picked up. So again, that first one, the little man's legs aren't pointing the right way, so I'll fix that. And it looks like one, it's dropped down, is that one or two levels? Just one. Okay, and then I'll knit him. Okay, here's the next one, and it looks like I split it a little bit when I picked it up. Okay, we'll knit him. Get him back on the needle. What have I done here? Oh, okay, all right, so there's another stitch. And again, a ladder. That's what you call that a ladder. When it drops, you get these sort of horizontal bars across it. Um, oh, okay. Bork on my dog says, sorry, I'm not into knitting. Um, so this may be a very classic project, but what is the Lenatus? That is a really good question. You know, I've been, it's what this particular pattern is called, but I didn't know what a Lenatus was. Does anyone else know without Googling it? I only found out because I, when I shared that photo yesterday on Instagram of me trying it on, I, um, I tagged it and I clicked on the tag for Lanatas to see if anyone else was knitting this jumper. And I, I found a few other jumpers, but I also saw all these pictures of watermelon and I couldn't figure out why. And then I discovered that Lanatas is part of the scientific name for watermelon. I have no idea why Susan Crawford named this pattern Lenatus, but I believe it comes from watermelon. All right, I think I have, I think I have rescued this. Have I? Let's just double check. So, I mean, I've stretched those stitches out quite a bit, but they're all picked up. And so, oh, nope, nope, I missed one. You can see there's a bit of a horizontal bar there. That looks like I was meant to, I dropped something down and it, I didn't pick up all the, all the stitches. And which one is it? Is it this last one? Actually, it's quite a few. I'll go have to take the last few back. So I'm gonna unknit the last couple. One, two, is that enough? No, it looks like all of them, I missed that one. One, two, three, four, will that do it? Yeah, I think it's those four. So I'm actually gonna drop this one down one more. So it looks like it did drop two. So unknit that and then, where's that other? Just unknit it a little bit more, dropping each one down. So this is dropped down and now I've got behind it one, two. Just two, all right, so that one is just two. So I'll pick up the bottom stitch and then pick up the top stitch. This is like diffusing a bomb or something, you know, like doing something very intricate and dangerous and the whole thing could blow up my face. Okay, this one, drop it down another row. And yes, I did, I missed a stitch when I picked it up. 
So as I said, most, most errors are recoverable. You just have to, you have to know what it looks like when something isn't right. See you, Dennis. See you later. Um, you have to know what it looks like when something isn't right. And so that's the best thing you can do there is just practice knitting. Knit a lot and you will get very good at knowing when something, when something looks wrong. And that's the first key to knowing when you have a mistake to fix. I think. Have I fixed it? What is, what is going on here? Just undo that. I twisted a stitch. Always undo it, do it again. It's very exciting. I'm just, for those of you just tuning in, what happened is Chris's cable needle, the tip came off and I lost a bunch of stitches at either end, which caused me to freak out. Um, but never fear, it's just sticks and string. And that's what it was. The wool kind of caught on itself and I just had a little sort of bit to, there we go. And I've just painstakingly Pulled them all back onto the needle, and I think need a few more. That should be okay. And like I said, it will be really stretched out. Um, actually, you can't even tell. At this point, you can't even tell. And once I give it um, a wash and a block, you'll never know. Whew! Well, we managed to save that one. Um, oh, Bork, I'm a dog. My great grandma's into knitting. I just want to see how knitting works. Well, thanks for, thanks for joining in. Knitting is, um, it's both a, not as complicated as people think, but also way more complicated than people think. Like what I'm doing right now, not that complicated. A five-year-old can do it. I have taught children to do it. Um, but to actually knit something like this, where you have different yarn color in each hand and you're knitting an algorithm, basically executing a computer program in your brain, more or less, um, it gets very complicated. And then if you look at something like uh, the jumper I'm wearing, which is a cable jumper, um, this sucker was very complicated. Each of these different cables is a different chart, each of which has a different height of repeat in it, and you have to keep track of where you are on each of those at the same time. It gets very complicated. Uh, we talked last week, um, a friend of mine asked if there was any software for keeping track of where you are in a knitting pattern. And so um, Knit Companion is one that a lot of iPad users use. It allows you to sort of, uh, you know, have counters for different sections and keep track of where you are. Um, so Knit Companion is one if you use PDF patterns you can use. I use Notability on my iPad and, and write on it and, and mark which rows I've finished and which, you know, which sizes, which parts of the pattern I'm using, which parts I'm not using. So knitting can be complicated depending on what you knit, but it can also be simple. Oh, and sometimes, like when you drop 10 stitches, it can be hard stopping. So the, uh, these particular interchangeables, the Addy Clicks, um, that, you know, where, see it, you know, I can pull on it and it doesn't want to pull off. They, they use a mechanism, there's like a tiny spring in there in the join and a bit of a sort of locking groove. And so the way you take them on and off is you, you push in and twist and that will make them pop off. But it's also sometimes easy to <laughs> push and twist just as you're knitting and accidentally, as I did, pop your, pop your tip right off the needle. So make sure it's locked in. Um, you, uh, there's different types of interchangeable needles. And so I was showing some off on this morning stream, but the, the knit picks, the knit pros, um, they use more of a screw mechanism. So you actually screw the tips on and you can use a little tool to tighten them really tightly. 
and it helps avoid uh, what, you know, the, the calamity that befell me earlier. Could you make a Lanata scarf later? You could adapt that pattern to make a scarf. I mean, the problem with making a scarf using this, um, so I'm knitting this in the round, uh, Bork, I'm a dog, which means I'm knitting it as a tube. You know, this is actually like, uh, you know, I, I, as I said, there's a picture of me trying it on. It's, it's a tube that you can actually try on. So the back side, the inside of this is not nearly as pretty as the outside. So if you were to make a scarf, that would be on the back. And so that's not as pretty. Um, so the only way to, to turn this into a scarf and not have a wrong side would be to uh, knit the scarf as a tube. And you know, you kind of flatten it. So you could do that. You could totally knit a scarf using that patterns. Those patterns, a fair I'll stop pattern. You just have to knit it as a tube, a long tube. But yeah, I don't think, I think some people didn't realize you could knit tubes. You don't have to just knit flat rectangles and sew together. I mean, you can, this jumper I'm wearing, this was knitted as flat pieces. You know, a front, a back, the two sleeves, and then sewn together. Um, but you don't have to. You know, uh, this jumper is knitted as tubes. Um, the child sweater I was showing earlier that I knitted, um, this was actually knitted. This is an interesting one. So this, I believe the original pattern, the original pattern might have been knitted in pieces and sewn together, but I... I hate sewing things up. So I actually knitted the body on a circular needle and went back and forth um, to do the intarsia, which was a pain, let me tell you. But the sleeves, what you actually do is I then knitted the sleeves. I started each sleeve from the cuff up to the armpit as a tube. And so I had the body, I had two sleeves, and then I joined all of those tubes up into, and then went back and forth this, this striped bit around the yoke of this thing. Um, so I didn't actually have to sew the sleeves on. They are, they are, uh, it's knitted as one piece from the bottom up. Um, but you do have to sort of start the sleeve separately and then join the tubes in as opposed to what I'm doing now, the sleeves are on some spare wool and I will later pick it up and knit them down. Um, but yeah, this is something I, I knitted for well, it was for a cousin of mine. It was for a cousin who's now way too big for it, so I'm going to give it to another cousin. But yeah, that's flat uh, that is combining flat knitting and in knitting in the round. This is knitting all in the round, and the jumper I'm wearing was knitted all in the flat. And we also talked about steaking, which is where you knit something in the round, but then you cut it to open it up into something flat. Lots of geometry happening with knitting. Okay, folks, it is 10 o'clock on Sunday. Um, I am out of beer. I did fix my mistake, and so I will probably sign off for the night. Thank you for joining me. Uh, nice to meet you, Borkham a dog. You ended up being really cool. I'm, I'm glad you could join us, and I hope you learned something about knitting. Um, I will be here again next Sunday, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll finish the body on this thing, but you never know. Uh, it depends how many more hours of slogging through this endless stocking stitch I can do. Um, but hopefully I will see you all next week and have a lovely week. And, uh, 